Today we're going to paint this peony-like form, but we're not going to paint it petal by petal. We're going to look at value shapes, put the value shapes in, and when we stand back we will have created form. So let's get started. So let's talk through painting a peony, although I think this is actually a rose, but it's a peony form because it's not a cone, it's more like a platter. So the first thing I do is take out my big brush. This is not, not my biggest brush, but it's probably a number 12 flat. And what I'm doing there is putting in Naples yellow anywhere that I want to preserve as white because I don't use uh, masking fluid. Not, not on peonies anyway, because we're talking about really soft forms and masking fluid will always leave a sharp edge when you pull it off. And I'm usually not able to integrate that successfully. So all I've done so far is squint and look for my lights. Now I'm looking at my darks. And what I'm going to end up doing is painting this painting from darks to lights. So I'm going into those deep crevices with alizarin, al uh, not alizarin crimson, with uh, some permanent rose tipped slightly with a little bit of ultramarine blue. Now I'm not painting petal by petal. You can see those aren't petals, those are forms because I'm squinting and looking for any place where I can see value shapes. Those value shapes, if I identify them correctly, will create forms. Now I've gone one step higher. This is now probably just permanent rose with a little bit of Naples yellow added to it. So now I'm in mid midtones. The rule here is that I can't put anything in that's as dark as what I've already put in, and I can't put anything in that's lighter than the Naples yellow that I started with. As long as I adhere to that, I can use colors to create forms. So that's what I'm doing here. And I have a variety of reds that I've mixed up. Some are just uh, the uh, permanent rose. Some have a little bit of permanent rose with orange in it. Some have permanent rose with a little bit of Naples yellow in it. So they're probably about three or four different midtones that are going in to create these, form these shapes that I see. Because if I paint all the shapes with the exact same color, it's going to look extremely flat. But what's important here is that I am painting those shapes with the correct value, even though those colors are slightly different. So you can see, this I think this is a good example of not painting petals. Now I do look closely at forms, and I see, for the most part, that they're the ends of the petals are what remain kind of light. Now I have to put something in that gives me a contrast. I know my my background is going to be darker than anything that was in the, the blossom of the flower, so I'm going to start to put that in. But I want to be consistent with my brush strokes, so I'm using the same brush. I'm using that flat and creating some sort of abstract-ish kind of shapes and just placing them around that form. A little bit like you could think of it like confetti and it's really important to try to think about not making something look man-made. There's a tendency when you're painting to uh, repeat strokes especially in terms of their direction or length and so what I need to remember here is short strokes and try to keep them looking like they were uh, arbitrary. Getting a little bit darker here. I've added some cerulean blue in now. I really love cerulean blue for its uh, has a brightness that I really like. Whereas ultramarine blue, if I get too involved with ultramarine blue, things can get dulled down. And my goal here is to make things keep things as bright as I can. Now, now that that background has gone in, you can see that the flower has some form and some depth. Not enough. But this is my first pass. Why well, I always call this the first pass, meaning the first time I sit down at something and study it. Now I'm reinforcing some of the decisions I made at the very beginning. Remember those darks? They still exist, but they don't look as dark as they did before because of course watercolor dries lighter. So you got to make adjustments all the time. You're just always turning and pivoting and making changes. But sticking with your original plan and being strategic will give you more success, it gives me more success. Uh, try not, not to uh, panic. <laughs> 
All right, now what I'm doing is I know that there are very few actual whites on the form, and there's certainly no whites on that flower form in the places where the sun isn't hitting it. So I'm getting rid of anything that reads as white that's in the shade. And I'm doing that with just a little bit of dulled down permanent rose with a little bit of Naples yellow in it. It's really important to do that so that, once again, there's a creation of a round form. So once again, this always comes up that white in the shade cannot be as white as white where the sun directly hits it. That's going to be your whitest whites, where the sun hits those petals. Even if those petals are pink, they have to be uh, bright or, or light is what I should say, not bright. And in my case, my lightest lights are the white of the paper. And the minute I change that, if I do anything to the paper, I can never get those whites back, not with gouache or, or anything else. So that was the first pass. I go away because by then I'm a little tired. You know, my brain has worked really hard at making these major decisions, going from my starting with putting my whites in, then putting in my darkest darks, and then putting in all those different mid-tones. Now I'm back and it's time to finish this thing up. And in order to do that, wow, here I am, right back where you saw me do this. I've done this twice already, gone in where the darkest darks are. Only now I've tipped my permanent uh, rose with a little bit of that ultramarine blue because it's dark in there. It's dark in those crevices. I have switched to a round brush, and that's because I want to keep things really, really soft. I don't want to have, I want to have some hard edges, but not uh, as many hard edges as I have. And now I'm using some permanent rows to kind of reinforce some decisions, decisions that I previously made. But staying in the mid-tone still. And at this point, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm pretty happy with the blossom, but now it's important to go back and reinforce the background. Add more color and shapes to the background. There's some nice cerulean blue going in there. Now, if I was to make this extremely dark in the background, I would have what I call an island uh, surrounded by oceans painting. That's where you have something, you know, a form that's surrounded by a vast amount of sea or, or ocean. And I wanted to integrate this, and I've integrated this blossom, I think, by creating these flower-like petal-ish forms around it. So I think it reads okay. So that is one way to paint peonies which is to look at their overall shapes and create values that are the same as those shapes that you see, and you will start to discover that you can create forms. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Come see me at joemckenzie.com and subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.